Hello, and welcome to Decoding Xenophobia and Racism in 2020 Campaign Ads. My name is Andrea, and this is Zach, and we work at America's Voice, where one of our many projects has been tracking campaign ads that use racist or xenophobic dog whistles. In this series, we usually take one distinct dog whistle being employed in the 2020 campaign ads and break down the coded racist and xenophobic message. But today, we're going to take a step back and look at the historical context that led us to this point. First, let's take a step back in time to the 1960s. Thousands of Americans are deeply engaged in social movements centered around the end of legal segregation and violent discrimination throughout the nation, demanding that the United States start to live up to its promise of freedom, justice, and equality for all. But powerful interests did not want the country to evolve and change, and they were quite explicit and often violent in this position. Politicians sought to hold on to power with explicit racist appeals, perhaps best demonstrated by the infamous inauguration address by Alabama Governor George Wallace in 1963. And I say segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. Fortunately, this marked the end of a political era with the civil rights movement forcing the country to change its laws and its people to update their values. Racism, however, was not yet vanquished. Instead, it too evolved from de jure by law or de facto in practice, while its practitioners began to strategically code racial ideas for the pursuit of power and material wealth, or blowing a dog whistle. Explicit racism became politically harmful, but politicians still sought to use the potent strategy of racial division they needed to signal racist ideas without explicitly naming race. Politicians quickly picked up the dog whistle in hopes of gaming an edge on their campaign. In seeing this turn when he ran for president in 1968, George Wallace helped code the racism into dog whistles, promising an end to school desegregation as force busing and fear mongering to illusions of white women being attacked on the street. Why are more and more millions of Americans turning to Governor Wallace? Follow as your children are bussed across town. As president, I shall within the law turn back the absolute control of the public school systems to the people of the respective states. Why are more and more millions of Americans turning to Governor Wallace? Take a walk in your street or park tonight. As president, I shall help make it possible for you and your families to walk the streets of our cities in safety. Wanting to court Wallace voters and benefit from the racist backlash of the gains of the civil rights movement, Richard Nixon would use the themes of law and order as coded racist messages, driving voters to the ballot box out of fears of the non-white others who were demanding justice in the streets. In ads like this, It is time for an honest look at the problem of order in the United States. Dissent is a necessary ingredient of change. But in a system of government that provides for peaceful change, there is no cause that justifies resort to violence. Let us recognize that the first civil right of every American is to be free from domestic violence. So I pledge to you, we shall have order in the United States. This strategy of coded strategic racism for electoral success would be popularly referred to as a Southern strategy even as they courted voters in all parts of the country. In an interview in 1981, Lee Atwater, a notorious campaign consultant and practitioner of dog whistle politics, who worked at the top of the GOP, once described how he understood coded racism to work by saying, Start out in 1954 by saying, by 1968 you can't say that hurts your backfire, so you say stuff like uh, force busing, states rights and all that stuff. And you're getting so abstract now, you're talking about cutting taxes and all of these things you're talking about are totally economic things and the byproduct of them is blacks get hurt worse than whites. Picking up the dog whistle in his 1976 failed bid for the Republican presidential nomination, Ronald Reagan helped establish one of the most infamous phrases in the dog whistle political history, the welfare queen. Reagan's goals with this dog whistle was to further manipulate racial ideas of the non-white taker in contrast with the hardworking white taxpayer, creating us an us versus them racial dynamic in the hopes of securing political power. In 1980, in what would be his first successful presidential run, Reagan chose to blow a different dog whistle in announcing his candidacy, declaring himself a believer in states' rights at the Neshoba County Fair in Mississippi seven miles from where three civil rights workers were murdered in 1968. 
In 2007, Bob Herbert, a columnist for the New York Times wrote, everybody watching the 1980 campaign knew what Reagan was signaling at the fair. Whites and blacks, Democrats and Republicans, they all knew. The news media knew. The race haters and the people appalled by racial hatred knew. And Reagan knew. He was tapping out the code. It was understood that when politicians started chirping about states' rights to white people in places like Neshoba County, they were saying that when it comes down to you and the Blacks, we're with you. Following Reagan, George H.W. Bush picked up the dog whistle strategy. In the campaign, Bush ran this ad. Bush and Dukakis on crime. Bush supports the death penalty for first-degree murderers. Dukakis not only opposes the death penalty, he allowed first-degree murderers to have weekend passes from prison. One was Willie Horton, who murdered a boy in a robbery, stabbing him 19 times. Despite a life sentence, Horton received 10 weekend passes from prison. Horton fled, kidnapped a young couple, stabbing the man and repeatedly raping his girlfriend. Weekend prison passes. Dukakis on crime. This Willie Horton ad is trading in a long history of a racist idea of a black criminal attacking a white woman. And though race is never explicitly mentioned, the ad seeks to activate the conscious or unconscious racial fears to cast a vote for Bush. Bringing it back to 2020, we are seeing similar dog whistles today. The faces may have changed, but the racial manipulation is the same, trading off racial bigotry and fear in hopes for political gain. Well, that'll do it for today. But if you want to help decode the racism in the dog whistles and undermine their message, share this video with a family member, friend, or coworker and like and subscribe to the channel to see our next Decoding Dog Whistle video.